We live in a fast-paced world full of distraction and noise. We have access to the answers of almost every question imaginable, all within the palm of our hands. With so many voices competing for our attention, how do we know which one to listen to? And in the midst of the noise, how do we determine the will of God? What if we could amplify God's voice in our lives so that we could hear more clearly where He is leading us? Tune in and listen. Good morning. Well, welcome again to Victory Family Church. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, how awesome are baptisms? It's just, oh, so cool. And... I love baptisms. I love what they. I love what they represent. I just like everything about it. It's just. It's incredible. It's one of my favorite Sundays, just because we get to celebrate all that God has done and and continues to to do. Uh, before we jump in the message, I want to just remind you Wednesday night. Uh, we, we have a Bible study, a book study, um, and we're going through a book written by a guy named Mark Batterson called uh, Circle Maker. Look, it is an incredible book. It challenged my life immensely, uh, like immensely, like like one of the best books I've ever read in my life. And so Wednesday nights at 6.30 in the, in the, in the venue, and at 5.45 there's food for the whole family. And so, and then at 6.30 there's programming for the whole family. So uh, adults are in the venue, stu- uh, youth, I say students still, it's youth. They change it, it was youth, or it was youth like in the 90s, and then students was cool, now it's youth again. But now it's youth with no vowels, it's just Y-T-H. So, <laughs> whatever, so... And then Incredible Kids Ministry on uh, Wednesday night as well. So I'd love to see you this, this Wednesday. Um, I, I've been a senior pastor for seven years now, and then I was a student pastor for about, about 13, or student or executive pastor for about 13 years. And through the entirety of almost 20 years of ministry, the question I get more than any other question is, how do I hear the voice of God? And then the, the, the second question, it's a very similar question, is how do I know what God's will for my life is? And the reality is if we can really get good at the first one, if we can really get good at understanding, knowing, discerning the voice of God, then the second question takes care of itself. Like if I can know when God is speaking and what he is speaking, then I'm, I'm always going to know what his will is for my life. So over the next four weeks, we're going to kind of unpack how do you prepare yourself and then how do you actually hear and then what do you do when you hear the, the voice of God? How many of you have ever had a, like a satellite dish at your house? Anybody ever had, you've ever had, come on, raise your hands, raise your hands, come on. Okay, so I just got fiber at my house. Um, I, I live, it only takes me 12 minutes to get here, uh, but I kind of live a little bit, a little bit out of town. And so I'm, like, I'm close, but whatever. Uh, and so I've had a satellite dish for the last three and a half years. And for whatever reason, anytime a storm comes in, I lose reception. And it was, sometimes I don't care at all, but other times like, I feel like, like it, I'll be watching a thunder game and it'll be like, 12 seconds left, like, right? And you know a storm is there. You know it's happening at some point, but a storm's coming. Like, we'll be down by, by, I say we like I play. The Thunder be down by two points. There's 12 seconds left. We have the ball. We go down. Yes, they, like, like, they'll shoot the shot, and all of a sudden, it's, my, my TV freezes. So, I have no idea, right? The, the Thunder didn't stop playing. TNT or whoever I'm, I'm watching, they didn't stop broadcasting. There was something that was affecting my reception. And that's how it is when it comes to the voice of God. The Lord is always speaking. He, he hasn't stopped speaking. He, 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 he didn't stop having a plan for our life. But oftentimes there's something blocking the reception. So here's my prayer today, that we can maybe all identify and begin removing some of those barriers so we can better hear the voice of God. If you have your Bibles, open to Luke chapter 8. I'm going to start in verse 5. Luke chapter 8, verse 5. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and it was trampled on, 
and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. So other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. So this is simple agriculture. I've got these uh, flower seeds. Moonflowers. Anybody have moonflowers at your house? Anybody? Two of you? Cool. Yeah, see? It's great. I would love to plant some moonflowers here. London, come here. Help me real fast. Like, I would love... Wouldn't it be cool if we could plant a flower in your hand? Like, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be the sickest thing in the world? If I could just... Here, hold, hold your hand up. Okay, now close it. Now, speak to it. Just say, grow, little dude, grow. <laughs> All right, open your hand. Open your hand. It probably worked. Nope. Okay. Um, maybe squeeze it super tight. Okay, now open it. Nothing. Okay. Do you, what are the odds of that ever growing a flower out of your hand, do you think? Zero percentage. Zero percentage. <laughs> Zero percentage. <laughs> here, Mark, this is for you. You can have the trash. Thank you. Thanks for helping me out here. All right, you can sit down, Lana. Thank you. Uh, as dumb as that is, that's how a lot of us are with the Word of God. Like, it's like, we, it's, it's there, but it doesn't fall on good soil. And we say, I want to grow. I want to hear. But we haven't yet prepared our heart to hear. We haven't uprooted the weeds to be able to hear. Yet, so we're saying, come on, God. I don't know why this isn't working. It makes a lot of sense when it comes to a simple seed in a hand. And it makes the same sense when it comes to God's word in our heart. Here's what happens in, in verse 11. The disciples are like, great story, Jesus. What does that have to do with us? In verse 11, Jesus said, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. What God is saying is the word will be received based on the condition of your heart. It's just like in, in Chickasha, we did the landscaping for Chickasha this week. And it is looking beautiful. The, the, fence, has, the, the fence is in, guys. The fence is in. I feel like you should be more excited about fences, but whatever. Uh, the trees, the trees are in. Like, it's coming along. Yeah, there we go. So, so it's, it's, it's incredible to, to see it. But first, before we planted the trees, but before we planted the flowers, before we planted the bushes, we had to remove all of the, the, the junk. And that's what we're going to talk about today is before God begins speaking, we're going to begin removing all the junk so we have fertile soil that God can speak to our hearts. So we're talking about four barriers that we can remove from our lives. Number one is the barrier of sin. Okay, so I want to be super clear. There, there's an, an incredible difference between unrepentant sin and forgiven sin. Because a, a lot of you mistakenly believe that after you gave your life to Jesus, you've asked for forgiveness, he has forgiven you, but some of you still believe that some of the sins of your past affect how God speaks to you today, and that could not be further from the truth. In fact, that's a lie from the enemy that he will keep lying to you as long as you believe it. Look, when you come to know Jesus, you are free, you are made new. The sin from your past, the Bible says that, that God cast it as far as the east is from the west. I'm terrible with directions, but that's pretty far. There, no longer does he even remember your sin, is what scripture says. So the sin of your past, the forgiven sin of your past can never hinder God's ability to speak to you, but the unrepentant sin in your life absolutely does. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 says, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. This is not God can't look at us or God is mad at us. God knew you were going to sin. That's why he sent his son to die on a cross for you. This is us choosing to separate from him. Sometimes Christy will start a conversation. And let's just say we're in the kitchen and we're talking and about whatever in life. And Christy, for whatever reason, in the middle of the conversation, she's talking, words are coming out of her mouth, but she'll just wander off to another room. And she's still, she's still talking, and she'll just go, she's talking, and she's talking. I don't know what she's talking about anymore, because she's in a different room. I can't hear anything that she's saying. And then she'll come back into the room, and she'll say, so what do you think about that? <laughs> about what? <sighs> I just about slipped. 
She said, what I just said? I, said, I didn't hear a word that you said. I'm not following you around the house to, like, I just, I'm like, I didn't hear you. You're in a different room. And that's how we are with God all the time. It's not that God took steps away from us. It's that when we sin, we are taking steps away from him, which inhibits our ability to communicate with him. Check this out. James 1.21 says this. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. I, I talk about repentance a lot. It means to, to turn from repenting is to turn from your, your sin. And here's, that's why I love baptisms. Because all, all this is, it's just a beautiful example of repentance. I love this. It says, Rejected by the world. Found my place in Christ. What is that? That's an example of, of repentance. Sometimes repentance kind of seems like a harsh word. almost seems judgmental. Repentance is not a harsh word. Repentance is the, one of the most grace-filled words we could ever speak out of our mouths. You, you go from broken to made whole. Unloved, unwanted, unknown to... You guessed it, loved, wanted, and known. You go from hopeless to found hope. That's what repentance does. Those of you that you're in Christ, don't, like, don't worry about God not hearing you because of your past sin. That has been forgiven. But listen, those of you that you have sin in your life, I want to be very, 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 very clear. I, you shouldn't be stressed today either. Because I'm about to give you an opportunity to know Jesus. You have an opportunity to be forgiven of all of your, your sin. Those of you that your life is full of sin, you shouldn't be sweating in church today. You should be the most excited human being on planet Earth because today you can be forgiven. Today you can be free. Today you can have a new purpose, and today you can have a new hope. Today you can identify with all of them and all of them. To say, I, I'm not what I once was. And you can clear the air between you. And Jesus, but until you repent, it dramatically affects your communication with God. Second bear, this is going to be tough for some of you. I'm going to acknowledge that coming in. It's going to be very, very difficult. This is a difficult point, and this is going to hurt some of you to your core. But I'm only saying this because I really want to help some of you. You have to remove the barrier of unforgiveness. These two passages I'm about to read, I'm just going to let you know like they're hard for me. Mark chapter 11, verse 24 says this, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. That's fantastic, right? Oftentimes we say verse 24, but we forget verse 25. Because 24, it's just way, it's way more fun. Like, believe it, receive it, I'm in. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, why? So that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Matthew chapter 6. This is the words of Jesus. This is not the words of Adam. This is not my, my thoughts, my spin. This is the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6. And so is Mark. But Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 15 is one of the most difficult passages in all of Scripture. But if you do not forgive others their sins... Your father will not forgive your sins. I theologically struggled with this verse my whole life. I didn't write it. I didn't say it. But one day I'll stand before God, and I'll be re responsible for preaching the entire counsel of Scripture. And this is part of it, and it's an important part of it. It's Jesus saying, if you don't forgive other people, then God won't forgive you. And I understand why this is so hard for, for some of you. For, for some of you, it's like, that's easy. I forgive or whatever. But, but, but you, you that say it's easy, most likely nothing tragic and unthinkable has ever happened to you at the hands of someone else. Because there's some people in this room that you're a victim of something absolutely horrific. And for you... You sit here today, as a, and I'm not saying as a victim mentality, I'm saying as a legitimate victim. Something awful happened to you, and now all of a sudden, I'm sitting here saying, Jesus says, if you don't forgive them, what, what do you mean I got to forgive them? I didn't do anything wrong. It was them who did something to me. Why would I ever forgive them? It's 
It's two things. I'm, be very, I'm trying to be very careful and sensitive. I want you to understand this. No one will ever be able to sin more against us than we've sinned against God. And yet he still forgives us. Jesus is our example. And if you look at Jesus, even on the cross, tortured, mutilated, drove nails in his hands and through his feet, kind of thorns on his head, and they jammed a spear in his side. And even Jesus says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We forgive others because he forgives us. And I know there's still a, why? Why, why would I have to, to do this? And, and please, if you don't hear anything else in this message, please, please, please understand this. Forgiveness has very little to do with them, but everything to do with you. It's, it's all about you. Jesus loves you. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to walk in your destiny and your purpose. And you cannot do that if you're harboring unforgiveness and bitterness in your soul. Jesus wants you to release it. He wants you to be able to, to walk in your freedom. You, you guys have heard probably preachers your whole life say this if you've ever been in church. Unforgiveness is like drinking a deadly poison and expecting it to affect somebody else. It only affects you. Even secular research tells us how unhealthy unforgiveness is. The Mayo Clinic said that bitterness leads to unhealthy relationships. It destroys your spiritual and psychological well-being. It creates stress and hostility. It increases your blood pressure. It increases symptoms of depression, anxiety, and chronic pain. Increases the risk of alcohol and substance abuse. I love it when uh, science finally catches up to the Bible a couple thousand years later. It's cool how that works. Jesus wants you healthy. The, the enemy wants you to focus on the offender. But Jesus wants you to focus on your forgiver. The, the enemy wants you to focus on why you're now limited because of what they did to you. Jesus wants you to focus on what you can do because of what he has given to you. God wants you to walk in this new life and this new purpose. He wants you to be free from whoever and whatever has done to you in your past. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. And again, I know this is difficult. Here in 12 minutes, we're going to go back into another worship song. And for some of you, here's what I would just love for you to pray this. God, I forgive them. God, I, you don't have to write them a letter. You don't have to call them. You don't have to ever see them again in your life. But God, I, and really mean it in your heart. God, I forgive them. Why would I do that so you can be free? And some of you say, I, no way, no way. Like, I'm a big believer in a journey with Jesus. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Those of you that are, you're on the no way, no way, no way, no way. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. God, help me want to forgive him. Start that journey of God. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite ready yet, but God, help me want to forgive them. You've got to remove the barriers of unforgiveness. And the third barrier we've got to remove is the, the barrier of distraction. I believe everything in me, Satan would move all of hell to distract you from hearing the voice of God. Yeah. We're going to do something real fast. Where's it? We're, yeah, all day's in the back of the room. So on the count of three, here's what I want you to do. I just want you to be really loud. Okay, you can yell, you can scream, at least clap. Some of you are like, I'm not yelling. At least clap for me, okay? This makes some noise. Those of you that you've always wanted to yell in church, here's your opportunity. Okay, we only do it for about 20 seconds, okay? Someone, and Ade is going to say something to me, okay? But you're going to be yelling as loud as you can, okay? One, two, three. Okay, 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 okay. 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 Some of you like that too much. Okay, okay, now everybody swat, 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 swat. Ade said the exact same thing again. Whatever you want, dude. I wonder how many times God's asked to meet us. But we don't hear him because there's a thousand little distractions all over the place. Any one of you clap, I can still, still, still hear him. With a thousand people in this room clapping and yelling, there's too many distractions. Anybody, would you just be really honest? Anybody feel like their life is one giant distraction? 
Come on, everybody's got kids. Raise your hand. <laughs> you know this? This, this, is, this, is, this is insane to me. The average person, not the average millennial. I know some of you might say those are young people. Because I know, listen, you, you old folks, I see you on, I, I see you on Facebook more than any, anybody else. I'm just telling you that. Yeah, I'm not sharing it. I don't care. I'm not going to hell because I didn't share your post. Oh. It's true. I, the average person clicks their phone, clicks on their phone 2,617 times a day. The top 10% of people, 5,400 times a day. It doesn't even seem possible. I saw another study that said on, on average we, we check our phones. Adults check their phones at least once every 12 minutes. In an unrelated study, I saw that when you get distracted, whether it's an email, a text message, somebody comes into your, your office, it takes you 15 minutes to gain full productivity again. I'm not, I'm not the sharpest dude in the world. I'm not great at math, but I do know this. If we check our phone every 12 minutes and it loses 15 minutes of productivity, we actually, we actually never have any productivity. Right? Negative three. That's what... <laughs> Some of you are like, yes, I finally understand. I mean, the math, it literally means it's impossibly fully productive with all the interruptions that we have, unless you have a plan. Thankfully, we have scripture, which is our plan. Psalms chapter 46, verse 10, he says this, be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. Hold on one second. Even 10 seconds is weird, isn't it? It's uncomfortable. You can get your thanks, dude. It, it, it's just, it doesn't feel right. That's how our, our brain is conditioned to something. It's gotta be something, gotta be something, gotta be, gotta be something. Stillness is a foreign concept to us now. Quiet, we don't get. He said, be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I love this. The King of kings, the Lord of lords will be exalted. What a great verse. And I love in this verse, it starts with stillness. Luke chapter 5, verse 16, it says, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. We, we know that Jesus went to a, a wilderness for 40 days. He fasted and he prayed. Jesus, the Savior of the world, if even Jesus had to get away in the lonely silence, certainly you and I do. Can you imagine Jesus didn't check Instagram for 40 days? Insane. I don't know how he survived. How did he know what was going on? What if the disciples had a party? How would he know? Here's, here's what I'm gonna encourage you to do. Create focused times and distraction-free zones in your life. Like if you don't have a plan, you will always be distracted. I, I, I can't give you my plan. My plan works for me. But you have to have a plan. You have to have a moment every day, and by moment I mean minutes, several, five, 10, 15, 20, 30, where distraction is impossible. T times where your, your phone is on silent or in another room where you have no human interaction. You can just get alone and be with, with Jesus. And most of you in this room, if not almost all of you in this room, so you, you think, there's no way. Why? Because you're too important? Somebody's going to need you in that 15 minutes you want to spend with Jesus? Somebody more important than, than, than God needs you? The concept of alone with Jesus is so foreign, and yet we wonder why we can't hear the voice of God. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just want you to think, like, you can't hear the voice of God because you're, you're not giving him any un uninterrupted time. I think half the time, God, God's like, open his mouth. He's like, but, uh, uh. yeah, go ahead and check that. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's super important. Cool. 
Be sure and like it and comment so they know you saw it. Go ahead. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. I was going to talk about the plan for your life, but whatever. It's fine. Although he's probably not sarcastic like I am. I'm just saying. That's, that's how I would see it. We got to learn how to remove distractions so we can lock in with Jesus. And then the last one, this, this is going to be tricky for some of you, which is why it's my favorite one. Okay, so we got to learn how to remove the barrier of blessing. So everybody, everybody say, everybody say the word blessing. Now, now everybody get your, get your fingers up like this. Quick, 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 quick. Now everybody say blessing. Okay, I'm not talking about blessing. I'm talking about blessing. Okay, they're two very different things. Okay, so don't get the theology twisted here. Don't tweet wrong. I know some of you. Are. Blessings from God. Listen to this. Blessings from God are never a barrier. Never. But what if many of the things that we think are blessings from God aren't actually blessings at all and they're not from God? What if, what if the enemy would give you the riches of the world to distract you so you didn't need to depend on God anymore? What if, what if the enemy would give you all the things that you prayed and fasted and got alone with God about? What if the enemy gave you those so you stopped praying and fasting and getting alone with God? It's weird to think about, huh? People all the time. And I got this promotion and got this job opportunity in a different state. Not that there's great churches in every state, but it takes them away from the place that they found God. It takes away from their support system. It takes away from all their, all their friends. All their, the, it takes them away from their small group. It takes them away from their place that they serve. And six months later, I get a call. I get an email. And their life's falling apart. It wasn't a blessing from God. Many times what we call the blessed life is actually the deceived life. I want you to think about this. Those things that you think are blessings, did they bring you closer to God or farther away? God will not give you a blessing that's going to take you farther away from him. Some of you might, you said my, my lake house, my boat, my jet ski, my four-wheeler, my kid's athletic career, those are all blessings from God. Listen, my, my son is currently playing a soccer game right now. He'll be at the one o'clock because we make it a priority that he's here at some point during the day and goes to church. I'm not saying that lake houses and boats and jet skis are bad. In fact, I hope all of you have them and let me borrow them at times. I'm just saying. <laughs> just kidding. I don't want your crap. But honestly, I hope every one of you is filthy rich. And, and, and you use what God has given you to build his kingdom. I'm not, I'm not preaching a poverty gospel. I'm just asking you to, to think about, are the things that I thought were a blessing drawing me closer to God? And if the answer is no, then I would reevaluate if that's a blessing at all. I wonder, I wonder if anybody in this room, you got so blessed you stopped talking to Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 39 and 40. She had a sister called Mar Mary who was seated at the Lord's feet listening to his words. But Martha was distracted with all her preparation. She came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. Sounds like a conversation I have with, 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 with my children. When I'm, coming, I'm doing all the work. Tell Beckham to help me. Mary and Martha, they're grown people though. One of them is doing all the work, and the other one is just hanging out with Jesus. And Martha, she's doing all the work, and she's getting mad. Some of you been there? I'm doing all the work, and I'm getting irritated. Mary doing nothing. She's just hanging out. And Jesus comes back, and he says, Mary has chosen what is better. What? But I'm doing all the work. Yeah, but she's sitting at my feet. I'll just be honest with you as your pastor. I've, I've confessed this before, and I'll just be honest, it's been a, a cycle for me that I come in and out of, and I would love to tell you that every single day I'm Jesus Jr., and I don't screw up, but you're at the wrong church. <laughs> I'm an idiot a lot of days. But there are a lot of moments in my life, and even days or even probably weeks, Dare I say months, 
where I put much more time doing the work of the Lord than sitting at the Lord's feet. I've been really convicted a lot of days in my life where I felt like God speaks and just says, stop it. Just sit at my feet. Let me speak to you. There's so many of us that we're just busy and we're busy and you're not busy doing bad things. But the Lord would say to us, stop it. It's not that what you're doing is bad, but I've got something better for you. Your job is not bad. Your, your boat's not bad. Your, your kid's, he's seven, and I know he's going to play in the NBA. That's not bad. But are you missing sitting at the Lord's feet? Is the work, the good stuff, taking you away from the God stuff? Let's be a church. Over the next three weeks, I'm going to talk through what does the voice of God sound like? How do you how do you know what it is? How do you decipher that from other voices? We're going to talk through that. But this week, what I really want you to focus on, how do I prepare my heart so I'm ready to hear God's voice? Listen, if God speaks and it falls on bad soil, it doesn't matter anyway. So this week, in your own, your own time, I want to encourage you, Prepare your heart to hear God's voice. Let's remove some barriers so we can really lock into who he is and what he wants for our lives. Heavenly Father, we love you. And we're grateful for you. Lord, I pray that, God, you'd help us to hear your voice and, and obey. God, we want to know you. But, God, we know that we got to get rid of some, some distractions in our lives. God, I pray that's what we would do today. We would learn the, the busyness of, of life. The good stuff may not be the God stuff. God, let us give up good so we can have great. Father, let us, let us be able to forgive. God, so you can forgive. So we can walk in freedom. heads bowed and eyes closed across this room nobody looking around if, if you're here and you would just say I, I got sin in my life I got unrepent I'm not talking about in your in your past that you've already asked God to forgive you of you've repented I'm not talking about that I'm saying right now you would say I'm not living for God I, I I've been I'm, I'm sinning I'm, I'm not living for Jesus but I want to I want him to forgive me of my sins I want to clear the air between me and God. I, I want to have a new destiny, a new purpose. Maybe you can relate to some of the cardboard signs that you saw and you, and you so desperately want to be able to flip the script in your own life. And you'd say, I want to be forgiven and I want to be made new. All across this room, if that's you, say, I want to, I want to repent of my sins and I want to begin following the Lord. Will you just simply raise your hand so I can pray with you? I want to be forgiven. Thanks, thanks bunch of folks. Praise God, yeah, all over the room. Amen. Very cool. A few down here, a couple over there. Amen. Yeah, wow. But everybody just pray this prayer together all over the auditorium. Pray this prayer together with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of all of my sins. I repent. I'm not going to live for myself anymore. I'm going to live for you. I believe and I know you came and you died, and you rose again, so I could be forgiven, so I could be free, so I could be saved. So I give my life to you. I will follow you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks so much for jumping on our YouTube page. My name is Adam. I'm the pastor here at Victory Family Church. This is my wife, Christy. Uh, I just want to say welcome to the family. We talk about family a lot here. Now you're a part of the family on YouTube. And so hopefully the content here will help you, challenge you, encourage you, and maybe make you laugh a little bit. So uh, subscribe. We'd love to have you. Uh, have an awesome day.